Hello everyone, good day and welcome back to the ADD workshop. Today we've got a Craftsman 14 inch electric chainsaw. <clears throat> I got this from uh, Sears before they closed down. Got it, I believe, 40% off. Only paid, I think, $35 for it, which for a Craftsman, excellent deal. I paid actually more than that for that... Uh, Portland chainsaw that I got from Harbor Freight the last chainsaw that I took apart um, See we're gonna take this thing apart see how it's built and kind of compare it to that Harbor Freight chainsaw that I've already taken apart which I'll leave a link to that video in the description below So you can check out both of them and see which one you know see the differences see which one's a little bit better than the other and uh, You know go from there so without further ado, we're going to take this thing apart and uh, show you what I find. Okay. See, we got that off. To start off, we do have an Oregon bar and chain, just like the Portland chainsaw we took apart. So in this respect, it's exactly the same. It's no better, no worse. Just has Craftsman branded on it. All right, take off our blade guard here. Now, I have used this chainsaw a little bit, as you can tell. I have a little bit of crud built up in it. All right. So we're going to pop this chain off and let's take a look at this tensioning device. Looks like a well, very normal tensioning device. No different than most that I've seen in uh, smaller residential chainsaws. So we do have the little o-ring on this one if we're meeting up against the bar to keep all the, the wood shavings and stuff out of this little groove. Um, the Portland chainsaw didn't have that so this would get filled full of wood chips and stuff and get packed up and not oil your bar so already this chainsaw is better than the Portland one that we've taken apart but we're going to continue on and see where it leads us Okay, so thankfully this plate just holds in your adjustment. The actual stud goes into the plastic, hopefully all the way through the plastic, but it's probably molded into it. Looking at this, this doesn't have to come off to continue taking this apart, so just to minimize the amount of screws I have to remember where they go, I'm going to pop this back in. Okay, so here we go. I believe we got all the screws out. Let's pop it open and see what's on the inside. Still got something holding us. So they put a uh, sticker right across the seam, no doubt to void the warranty when you decide to take it apart so you don't have to worry about taking yours apart I'm doing it for you all right so here we go let's uh let's see what she's made of here I got something attaching us on there all right 
this little screw still holding. All right. All right, stretched out our spring nice and big. I don't know why it was attached onto the other side of the clamshell here, but I will say that thing is rigid as can be. It is a uh, PA6 glass fiber reinforced 30%, so tool grade plastic on it. Do have our, see if I can not lose all my screws here. There goes one. All right, our bull gear is a nice, looks like centered powdered metal, but got a nice bearing on it. This is very nice. If you remember the uh, Harbor Freight one that we took apart, it was nowhere nearly as nice. It had a uh, plastic bull gear on it. It was a nice big round bull gear. This is so, so much better. It's gonna last and last and last compared to that uh, Harbor Freight chainsaw. So, as of right now, what we're seeing is much, much better quality than the Harbor Freight chainsaw. Good bearing on the front and the back of our gear here. Um, let's see if I can get a closer look. Uh, as you can see, it is a powdered metal gear. You can see all the specks and flakes. You can tell it's just powdered that's been centered together. They uh, just put it in a mold and then heat it up to centering temperature. And all the little uh, stuff sticks together and it makes a gear. It's a much cheaper way to do it. Um, I doubt it's cheaper than plastic, which is why the Harbor Freight Chainsaw had a plastic bull gear. Um, this is excellent, though. You won't get stuff packed into the gears nearly as bad as you would in that other type of bull gear. So as far as longevity goes, already I can tell you this chainsaw will last head and tails over the other one. All right, getting on into the housing here we got our oiling bottle um, nice little plastic looks like they run the hose down below and then back out um, which is pretty nice considering we also have a see if you can see this we'll get to it there's a gear down in there and that is actually for the pump itself it rides on the uh, spindle as you can see on the end of this spindle right here it's an actual screw so as this spins it screws down or up whichever way I'm not sure and turns this little gear down in there and you get oil now if you notice that's a metal gear as well so that little reciprocating piston pump that was in the uh, Harbor Freight chainsaw very very not nearly as good as this it also on that chainsaw to hold down your spur gear had a uh, spring clip which if you remember I broke it and had to weld it back on but on this it looks like an 8 or 10 millimeter nut holds this gear down onto the uh, motor shaft excellent excellent design over a C clip so already I'm really liking what I'm seeing here um, we're gonna get down here to our switch portion of everything and uh, see we got to activate our safety good heavy you can hear how heavy that switching is and uh, excellent switch I imagine it would last some amount of time let's see what it says on there uh, nothing that I can discern but anyway so I'm imagining this was our spring for our safety that got jammed up one way or another. Got a good strain relief down here. See a 16 American wire gauge 105C um, SJTW 300 volt. Xinjiang Huayan. Uh, yeah see if uh, see if you can read that uh, you got me so anyway so far 
the mechanics of how this thing works is very similar to the uh, other chainsaw that we took apart. However, the small details so far are so much better than that chainsaw. So anyway, we're going to keep trucking along here, see if we can't get the rest of this red piece off of here, red uh, part of the clamshell, and get down into the motor itself. And uh, let's see, our little bottle just fell out. Looks like uh, we're going to start on this side and uh, take out, take off our motor cover, see if we can't see anything spectacular. So, we got our motor cover. The uh, vents are very beefy. They made them nice and big to where they're not going to break. And they're on the end here. So, I mean, you'd have to be setting it down in a very odd way to break this against something. Um, looks like it's the same plastic that they made the clamshell out of. Just a nylon reinforced glass fiber. Actually, no, PP. No nylon, no uh, glass fiber reinforcing in this part. Strangely enough, you would think the part that stuck out is going to be made stronger than the rest of it. But, you know, they had to cut some corners somewhere, I suppose. So, not too much to this. Just, you know, just a little plastic cup. And, uh, yeah, we'll set that aside for now. Alright, so we get down to our motor here. And, uh, oh, you can see our pump mechanism a little bit better here. And you can see... See if I can, nope, can't reach up in there and turn the gear. All right, so we're gonna have to wait to see that. See, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can remove my connections to the motor. It may or may not be a good idea. Nope, there's no removing these connections here. Um, we'll say this, they do have in this one to where you can change the brushes. Uh, you couldn't do that in the Portland chainsaw so you can pull these screws and pull the brushes out in fact I'm probably going to pull one of the brushes out on this side so we can have a little look-see at it All right, we got our screws out, and it feels like there's a little bit of a preload spring in there to hold your brushes good against your commutation bar. Let's see, we move our little bracket. It's uh, just got a spade terminal straight onto what looks like a brass or uh, yeah, a little plate. It's very strange. Nice big brushes on it. That's pretty nice got the braided copper wire connecting the brushes to everything got a um, nice little brush holder looks like brass and it's encased in some type of resin I would suspect some type of thermal resin to where the heat didn't affect this mounting here because once this starts to heat up all of this is going to start to get a little bit loose so I imagine this is some sort of insulation to protect this plastic from the heat of the brush as it's spinning and builds up. <clears throat> All right, let's. Uh, I'm going to take these screws off on the front right here and see if the motor will come on out. May have to take our spur gear off. Screws aside, and that definitely let our motor loose. All right, let's flip it over because these little guys here are headed down, and they're not a whole lot of slack. So I'm going to try to relieve some of that and get some of this loose. Or not. Okay. So, here we go. We're going to pull this motor off here. Maybe I can flip it around. Yeah, I can. Alright. 
So before I take this uh, armature out, which I'm going to try to, let me remove this other brush so it doesn't damage itself. <clears throat> I have to say I'm very impressed with this chainsaw so far. It's a pretty good little chainsaw, especially for $35. <laughs> it's on sale, go get it now. All right, pull our other brush out. And now our armature should come on out. All righty, got our armature here. Now, if you remember on our uh, Portland, they did epoxy the commutation bar, or the stake ons to the commutation bar. Um, now, our commutator on this chainsaw is much, much bigger. The bars are beefier. Everything about it is beefier. Our back bearing is beefier. Same bearing on the front appears to be. Got a 627Z and uh, outdo. I believe is the brand written on there. Can we read that? Yeah, outdo. And then we got a yeah, 627Z. And on this side, let's see if we can read it. We have a 627Z. So yeah, same bearing front and back. You can see how our pinions attach to the whole motor shaft. Just this little bitty nut. Um, there's no keyway in here this thing is just slid onto the shaft and then compressed with this nut and that's enough to transfer all the torque from this motor to that pinion and uh, it's pretty amazing how that's happened uh, you can see a little bushing right here to uh, protect the uh, bearing from all the arcing that's going on all the UV on the commutation bar and you can see it doesn't have the grooved pattern in it um, but you know that's kind of unnecessary sometimes good size little bitty wires here I'd say that's uh, probably 22 gauge wire 24 gauge and uh, you can see where they balanced it here they took something beefy and cut that out same thing at the front with a smaller one I'm not sure if you can see yeah you can see how they they took out a good amount of material but over a bigger area that's yeah, pretty nice. I got one on that side as well. All right, so you know, just all in all, this chainsaw is a whole lot better than the uh, little guy we saw from that Portland. I'm just turning this little gear here, just like our little screw would, and it just uh, pumps. Let's see if we can get any oil to come out of here. I'm going to turn it. And it probably has a very high ratio of pumping, so it doesn't pump a whole bunch of oil uh, non-stop. It looks like we've got some coming through the little tube there. And I'm going to keep turning here. And we got a little drip starting. There it goes. Yay! It's got a little drip come out of there. That works really well. Really, really, really well. All right. So, you know, not a whole lot to this chainsaw. But uh, as you can see, just the components all together on it are just better than that Portland chainsaw. They're just better. And I think even before the rebate on this, this was about a $60, $67 chainsaw, something like that. And at that price, you're getting a Craftsman, you're getting much better build quality, and, um, you know, I really would say you're probably better off going with something like this over the Harbor Freight. Not to say that the Harbor Freight's a bad chainsaw and won't get the job done, but if you're doing sawing on a regular basis, um, I mean, even as a homeowner, and you need an electric chainsaw... I would go with this one if you just had a tree fall in your front yard and you need it gone and you don't ever do chainsaw work I would say go with the Portland um, it will probably last you a lifetime if you only use it once or twice a year um, this one will last you you know years and years and years 
but you could probably use it just about every day simply because the wearing parts won't wear out as fast on this as they will on the Portland. Um, makes this a pretty good value, I would have to say, in my book. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a dang good chainsaw. So anyway, I'm going to put this thing back together and let you hear it run and uh, see what you think of that. So <clears throat> here we go on the assembly. Oh, I'm sorry. I left out the field windings. You can see the field windings are much, much smaller than they were in the Portland. But everything else is better quality. And I would have to say the smaller wire on the uh, field windings on your motor is not nearly as important as some other aspects that they did make bigger on this chainsaw and better. All right, so here we go. And all right, so we're back together. And I just want to say, um, this chainsaw is a pretty good chainsaw, especially for the price I paid for it. You can't argue with $35. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things I saw in it that I really like. Um, the all metal bull gear, excellent. You can't beat that for an electric chainsaw. Um, let's see the trigger mechanism. Good and comfortable, very heavy switch on it. Uh, good bar, good chain. Uh, actually has metal teeth on it to hold on. Uh, let's see, glass fiber reinforced nylon for the plastic. That's excellent. Um, doesn't have a kickback safety on it. That's one thing I don't like. Um, only one stud to hold the chain on. That's something I don't like. Um, but that's pretty much it I don't have much to complain about with this chainsaw excellent excellent chainsaw for the money if I came across another one for $30 and I still had this one I would buy another one and taking it apart I kind of wish I would have bought another one from the beginning um, but you know hopefully it'll last me a long long time just like I had kind of deduced by looking at the thing but anyway, let's give it a little shot and see what it sounds like if I can get this thing to go. Alrighty, and uh, here we go. Let's see what she sounds like. Excellent. Thing doesn't weigh a whole bunch. Sounds great. Sounds a whole lot better than that uh, port when I took apart after I got it back together. Uh, anybody who watches that video will know why. Uh, <laughs> So, sum it all up, I would buy this chainsaw again tomorrow, every single day of the week. It is an excellent chainsaw. And if you happen to get to your Sears right now, or one that's still open, you might find them on sale fairly cheap. And if you do, pick it up, because it is an excellent chainsaw. There is nothing to argue about with it as far as value for money and uh, craftsmanship. It is... <laughs> It is excellent. So, I appreciate all of you, you know, coming here, watching me take this thing apart, joining me in the shop for a little while, and uh, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Go ahead, like, subscribe uh, the video, and you know, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff like this and a whole bunch of other things. Being the ADD workshop, you have no idea where a brain is going to be in the morning when you wake up. So there's no telling what I'll be doing when y'all join me here in the shop. So uh, hit the little alert notification button so you know when I post a new video. It might be something you're extremely interested in. But until then, I will see you on the next one, everybody. Have a wonderful day.